Hello everyone, my name is Chantelle Co, and I am a violinist and a programming musician with Max MSP. I am currently a master's student in sonic arts at the University of Calgary, and I am presenting my research in how I made Travis II, which is an acoustic violin that's augmented with touch sensors on the fingerboard and used to expand the violin's expressive capabilities. For this version of Travis, I made it under the supervision of Dr. Laura Olberg who is an HCI researcher in computer science and a very good violinist as well. And I had hired Aaron Pratt, who is a luthier in Calgary, to replace the fingerboard with my own. I had several objectives. I wanted the touch sensors to sense all four strings and the full length of the strings, have more force sensitive resistors, or FSRs, and to still use the violin in traditional contexts without the electronics. I also wanted to make sure that the strings aren't too high and it's still comfortable to play. The two projects that most influenced our design was Grosshausers and Pardue et al.'s. They both had touch sensors either embedded in the fingerboard or on top of the fingerboard. If you want to know more about augmented string instruments, please see our paper. A bit on the history of Travis. It started as my undergraduate capstone project back when I was at UBC with Dr. Bob Pritchard. Travis 1 had two soft pots on the fingerboard underneath the G and E strings and two FSRs clamped to the upper right bout. Now Travis 1 had its limitations. The soft pots only sense the G and E strings and they do not sense the full length of the strings and I found it limiting to only have two FSRs to change presets. My approach was to 3D print a fingerboard with strips made of conductive 3D print filament under each string run a voltage down the strings, and measure the variable resistance of the conductive strips. To test this concept, I set up a circuit with a conductive strip and spare string. When I connected the string to different points along the conductive strip, this showed me that I was getting a range of analog sensor values from one end to the other. And now I just needed to figure out the best combination of these variables to make sure the sensors provide the most stable data and the largest range of data as possible. Please see our paper for more details. Through process of elimination, I narrowed it down to using the dominant strings and 3.3k ohm resistors for all the strings, except for the E string, of which has a 4.7k ohm resistor. And as for the physical design, I added Swiss machine headers inside the end of the strips for the wires to plug into. I also printed various test blocks in order to figure out the proper dimensions for the strips to be able to easily slide in and out of. So when I printed the first fingerboard and got it on the violin, I found out that it was not strong enough when I played in the high positions. So I adjusted my 3D printed fingerboard to be half the height and Aaron the Luthier added a piece of flat ebony underneath to support it. The ebony greatly improves the strength, but we found that the fingerboard was still sagging a little bit. So Aaron made a little wood piece to prop it up into position. Overall, I think the most important thing I learned while making Travis 2 is do not sand conductive 3D print filament. When conductive filament is sanded, it loses its conductivity. And I decided to use the same Arduino as Travis 1, the MKR1000. It was multiplexed for eight analog sensors. And the Arduino case is the same basic design as Travis 1 with a few slight modifications to the dimensions. And to connect the strings, I have a JST connector hidden underneath the chin rest. Here's a picture of the same violin, just with the electronics and wires unplugged. So if I have back-to-back -back rehearsals with traditional violin music and interactive music, I do not need to bring two violins with me. So with Travis 2, I like to have the violin sound pass through different signal processes and map its sensor data to change these processes. So if let's say the violin sound is going through a delay, then the higher I play on the violin, the more delayed it becomes. I also like to map different strings to different processes. So for example, if I press the G string, the sound would be routed to go through a flange, and when I press a D string, then the violin sound goes through a pitch shift. I found that it works really well with double stops, where more than one string is played at once. It also works well in fast passages with a lot of string changes. Just to give you an idea of what I'm describing, here's a short excerpt from my first piece with Travis 2, Dream State. In this piece, I was improvising, except for in the ending cadenza, and in this specific excerpt, I mapped flange onto the G-string.
And here's an excerpt from Kindred Dichotomy, which was pre-composed. On the right there is Laura Olberg playing on Travis 1. In this excerpt, I had mapped the blue shape in the projection to change its geometry based on which string was pressed. <laughs> So far, I've composed and performed three compositions with Travis 2. Two out of the three compositions were improvised. Travis works well for improvisation because, other than occasionally pressing the FSRs, the violinist does not have to physically do anything they wouldn't normally do while playing. Cognitively, they can choose to focus on the process sound that comes through the loudspeakers and respond to it, or ignore it and only focus on their violin playing. As far as modifications go, there are a few that are more cosmetic, such as 3D printing with a resin printer instead of FDM, and using alternatives for the Arduino and battery to make it smaller. In my paper, I note different augmented cello projects that had some troubles with touch sensors on the fingerboard, so I am curious to find out if this method with conductive filament could work on a cello or even a viola and I speculate on adding EMG sensors or flex sensors on a glove and sleeve in order to track vibrato and specific fingering, so whether or not I'm vibrating can trigger effects. Scrubbing samples is something I've done in past compositions with Travis 1, but I have not yet explored it with Travis 2. I have used color-changing LEDs and DMX lights before for other projects, and I think it would be fun to have them be controlled by Travis 2. And thank you for listening to my presentation.